Well, hello there, DIYers. Welcome. Don't mind them, they won't bother you. Well, as long as I'm here. So, today's video project that I've got going on, as you can see, is repairing and repainting my front door jam. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, all you need is a little sandpaper, a paintbrush, and a paint roller. Well, you couldn't be further from the truth. A little something you may not know about me is I'm just a tad bit OCD. And if you've watched any of my other videos, well, you may have picked up on that. So here in just a little bit, I'll explain why I removed all the paint off the door jam. I removed all the old caulking. There are some repairs that had to be made, some of which I caused, unfortunately. And then the priming and repainting of this door jam. Now, some of the tools that I use for this project are modified putty knife, it's razor sharp. Hand plane, also razor sharp couple different types of tape, some sanding blocks that I made. Now, I didn't say there'd be no sanding. Also, a sanding sponge. And for a small part of this project, I used my orbital sander, caulking gun with caulking, and of course, my HVOP sprayer. Now, there's one other tool I used that you'll just have to continue watching the video to see, but what I used it for was to keep overspray from out of the inside of my house. Now, you're thinking, why would he have overspray inside his house? Well, you just have to keep watching to see. So I'll have affiliate links down below to all these tools. And what that means is, is if you click on the link and purchase the tool, then I get a small little kickback, which helps support the channel. But the price to use is the same whether you use that link or you go straight to the website. And also, if you like this DIY shirt I'm wearing, I'll have a link to my Etsy store down below where you can go purchase it and some other designs I have. As I was making this video, lumber prices are ridiculously high. Fortunately for us, this project doesn't require any lumber. So what's that mean? It's a relatively inexpensive project for you because paint, sandpaper, and caulking are still relatively cheap. At least they haven't gone up in price like the lumber has. So if you wanna see how to avoid the mistakes I make, and how I fix my mistakes, and the projects I'm doing, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification down below. And that way when my next video comes out, you'll be notified and you can see how I screw up and how I fix them. Now with that, let's get started on the project. So how did I get to this point? Well, when I was spray sealing the brick, I taped all this off so I wouldn't get sealer on it. And then when I went to take the tape off, a bunch of the paint peeled with it. And I thought, well, can't just leave it like that. So at first, like many of you, I grabbed an old putty knife and started just scraping like this. And you can see I'm getting some paint, but it wasn't very fast. Then grabbed the old sanding sponge and I would sand and sand and sand and sand. See, that took forever. What if you use a sharper putty knife? Then I'd gouge the, the wood. But man, that took forever. So because that part of it was so tedious and time consuming, I just moved on to other parts of the house. And many a days, even weeks and months went by. Here's an idea. Let's take an ordinary putty knife and turn it into one of those. And I'll bet that'll scrape that paint off lickety split. So how this great slam dunk idea was going to work was, is I was going to have this nice little rolled sharp edge on this putty knife. I was going to set it on here and pull down just like this. It was going to scrape the paint right off and all these shavings fall to the ground. Well, that was an epic failure. Not to worry, I came up with a second plan. It involves small little plane and the putty knife again. It was working so well, I couldn't stop myself. And before I knew it, I had 75% of this door jam done and I hadn't shot a single bit of footage. So what I did is I had this little bit of plane. I got my sharpening jig here. I found out that this was a 25 degree angle on this blade and I just started out at 100 and you just go back and forth. I got this nice and flat and I got my blade nice and flat. Then I took my putty knife and I'll tell you this part took a while and so I had to start at 100 grit and work at it quite a while before I even got it to the 22 and a half degrees uh, angle all the way across. Now what I did on this one is I decided I would put this at a 22 and a half degree angle. Now the hardest thing about all of this was getting this set to the right depth. So what I had done is I had luckily peeled off a piece of paint. As you can see how nicely it peeled that off and it peeled off just the paint and left the primer underneath. And basically, I took my measuring gauge, measured the sliver of paint. So I would get this set, I put it on my block of wood, 
and I'd go across and I'd take the shavings and I'd measure them. As you can see, that nice little shaving down there. And I'll go ahead and keep going here. Full width, all the way down. Nice piece of shaving. And it left just the primer. And just come back up, come over, and down like that. How slick is that? The primer sands out real easy. And just so you know, before I got it really dialed in real well, uh, I gouged some of the wood out using this method and had to sand. Now, I didn't say there'd be no sanding to this whole video. I just said, I'm gonna reduce it. And so areas where I gouged it really bad, I took my DeWalt orbital sander. And don't worry, I've got a slick little way here and a little bit in the video, show you how we're gonna fix that so it won't show up when you paint it. I'm not gonna give it all away right now. You have to keep watching. Also, I've got a couple other Two or three other uh, little tips or tricks you might say on uh, finishing this project. So this was really nice to get under that caulking, cut into that caulking, and I'll show you up there to get that caulking cut out. Because when I tried to use this, it wound up, instead of sitting you know, flat against it like this, it tilted because that caulking kept it pushed out. But once I got the caulking out of there, I could come back behind and run it down there just like that and take it all out. When I got the paint off, like I said, I just took my sanding sponge, and slicked it up. You see how easy that primer just sands right out? You've got to be very controlled. You can't gouge or you'll gouge this also. And basically, just run it right up along there. What I don't have done is the paint here. Here's another one of those little tips I told you about. I got some really stick sticky tape here. This is actually masonry tape. And how I came up with it is, well, that's how it got me here. So I'm gonna take a piece of the tape, make sure the surface is clean and dust, put it on here. Rub it on there really good and tight. And then just like waxing your legs. Well, for those who do that. And then this is all loose. Just like that, the paint's gone. What I'm gonna do, I've got this uh, putty knife sharpened, uh, nearly razor sharp. And then here and here, it's got caulking like it did down here. And so I can't really get my plane in there because of that caulking. So what I'm going to do is get this knife just up underneath there and cut all that loose. And again, you got to be really careful because this thing's sharp enough, it'll cut that wood. Lickety split. Peel it out just like that. Down here is just a rinse and repeat. If you can see. The thing is very sharp and it doesn't take much to get to the wood. Because of this little profile here, what I did was I took this razor sharp putty knife and I just scored underneath here and here all the way down so that it would cut the paint loose so then I could come back behind with my tape trick and pull it off. But literally what happened was is this all just started peeling up on its own by hand and I'll show you the peelings on the floor. 
see those big wide shavings down there like that one right there that peeled off by hand now this is where the weather stripping fits in and so what i'm going to do is paint all the way around and paint this and when the weather stripping's on here it'll kind of hide it and have it basically it'll be the break point i'm going to try the tape method on this and see if it comes off if not, then we'll go to using our little planer and, and our uh, putty knife that we made into a razor knife. So we got that edge really good. You can see that there. That'll be a project for the inside. But like that there, I'm going to show you how I'm fixing that. All right, so on to the next part of this little project, and that is to fix, well, some of my mistakes and some that were already there. So where the squiggly lines are, those are just rough areas. You can kind of see right there, how that's kind of rough there. And there's a gouge there. Whereas the circles with the D, that means it's dipped. And so I have to fill a little more. So I got a few of those. How am I going to fix this? Well, with a product called Bondo. Now this here is an all-purpose uh, Bondo. They make different kinds. It's a two-part thing. So this bottom part is your putty and then inside here's a little tube of hardener you mix those and you have a little bit of working time you put it in it dries in about 15 minutes or i should say cures in about 15 minutes hard enough to sand i'll mix my product up on here go over to the door spread it with the, the spreaders wait for it to cure sand it off let's get started because you haven't got a whole lot of time to play around here now the other trick to this that I learned uh, is don't put it on super thick because remember you got to sand all this crap off Okay, we're all done. You can see where it's been smoothed around on all the spots. It went on much easier this second time. I had a little bit more working time than I did the first one. And again, you can tell where it's starting to set up because it gets rough. Okay, I've let this set up and cure real hard. Now it's time to sand this stuff. How I did that was, is I went to my table saw and I cut down the old corner trim boards that I had left over when I replaced the corner trim. And so once I ripped them down to that, then I ran them through to smooth up each edge so I'd have a nice flat surface. And then I cut one of them at about 30 inches. I cut another one at about 18. And then I cut a couple at 16 inches. I took some 80 grit sandpaper and rolled it over and stapled it on the back side. I didn't want to staple it on this side because I can use this along here to sand this edge and this edge. And if I had staples in there, it'd make gouges. A wide, a long area in which to sand so that I would make sure I got a good flat surface. Whereas if I did a little piece like this, I'm allowed to just gouge it back out. You can see how it's scratched through or sanded through it. Now this here is just about done. I got a little bit here and a little bit here, but I'll Finish this out with the 150 and then the sanding sponge. Okay, I got it all done. I got this green tape on here because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel bond primer everywhere there's caulking. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos where I've done any of this stuff on the house painting series, you know that I'm a huge fan of primering and painting and then caulking. So I'm going to use peel bond. That has to take 24 hours to dry. I'll let that dry, then we'll come back and I'll paint it. That takes a couple hours to dry, then we'll caulk. All those gray spots. Now you can see the pencils showing through, and that's okay, because the primer will cover that. But I've got them all sanded down, and they're nice and smooth. I sanded it down to 220. You can see wherever it stays is where it was a low spot. Okay, so I'm all done with the priming and painting. It's good and dry. I removed all that old tape off because I didn't want any bridging between the tape and the paint. So when I peeled it off, the tape didn't rip or I didn't wind up peeling a 
section of paint off. Now what I'm going to do different is, is I'm going to, of course, put the tape down, but then I'm going to put another layer of tape exactly the same place over it. And the reason is, is so when I caulk, I can peel that tape off. There'll be no bridging and I can go right into painting here in a couple of hours. Alrighty, so I got it all taped off and I've taped it in such a way that I can start from the inside and caulk this groove here, pull the tape off, then I can caulk this groove, pull the tape off, and finally caulk this outside. As far as the caulking goes, I'm using Sherwin-Williams Shearmax. Now, this is what they call an elastomeric caulking, meaning it kind of stretches. Um, and this happens to be for all those that want to geek out a little bit an ASTM 920 class 35. Okay, so the typical way you open these, as you always see, is you put your uh, utility knife where you want it and you cut it at a 45 and you, you get your opening. But even if I do that, it still makes too big a hole. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drill bit and drill right down the center of this and make the smallest hole possible. And I just do it by hand and get it open. And there you go. Just like that. All right, so I got my caulk and my caulking gun. And I always have a trusty bucket of water and a rag in there. Clean up the messes. And let's get started with this. Okay. Make sure I wet my finger real well. And that's all you do. Um, along here, the double taping worked well. Now, the one thing I'm a little, a um, little bit disturbed by is when I was peeling the tape off of here, I got some areas peeled off. And so uh, the reason I'm a little perturbed or shocked is because I use that peel bond primer. All right, we're here at the masking part. You can see I got some of it, well, quite a bit of it masked off, actually. Um, and I'll show you why. I have to have this barrier up so I don't get overspray in the house. So when I paint this, I'm going to paint around here. The weather stripping will go in there and conceal the transition between the paints. So you have to be careful when you're taking these weather strippings out because they can tear. So what's this secret tool I got? Well, let me get it. This is it right here. Easy up. Two poles and plastic with a zipper in it. And this is how it looks from this side. Got it all taped off. Can't see any paint. It's basically a indoor outdoor paint booth. Got everything set up I'm using Sherwin Williams stain blocker primer. As always, I filter it. I did put uh, some bug juice in there. This, uh, when you mix it in there and spray it, it's supposed to keep bugs away. We're going to test that out and see how well it works. The tip I'm going to use is a 1.8. I got this monkey suit. I'm going to have a respirator and put this over my head. And we're going to spray some sun. Okay, it's been uh, almost uh, two hours since we did that. Again, always strain my paints, Sherwin-Williams. 
added the bug juice again. And the other thing I did was I added this M1 extender. Kind of helps to lay it a little smoother. The primer's good and dry. Um, in fact, I was able to take some 220 sandpaper to it and kind of smooth it up. So I'll finish getting this paint strained through here. All right, we're ready to get some color on here. Now, the only thing I'm going to do different this time, instead of trying to go like this, which you saw didn't work worth a crap, I'm going to just have to move the nozzle and spray. I only got half a quart in here, and so when I tilt it, it gets to where it doesn't suck any paint up. I didn't really need more than that. Um, so, here we go. All right, there's one more thing we have to do before I can do the big reveal, and that is replace the weather stripping. This weather stripping I kind of tore up and beat up and cut up trying to get this all done. So, and what's fitting is I got a new paint job, new weather stripping. Now this is probably gonna be the easiest part of the whole job. Take your new one and your old one, handy dandy scissors, that easy. Okay, I got all my pieces cut. Now in my particular case, I didn't need to miter the ends uh, because mine butt up into one another. And I'll show you in the wood jam here. The way my door jam is made, you can see I've got a groove and it dead ends right into that piece of wood. And then there's this groove that goes all the way to the edge. Now if these two grooves connected, then I'd have to miter, but mine doesn't, so I don't. So this part is real easy. Take this plastic here, you make sure the open end is towards the door, shove it in the groove, make sure you're tight against each side, and slide it in. All right, the weather stripping's all in, it's all done. Are you ready for the big reveal? Here we go. There it is, all nice and brown. Now. The door is another project, but that's all we got left. So, okay, so I have one mistake that I've got to fix and that's right up here. When I peeled the tape, it peeled some of the caulking that was on there. So what I'll do is I'll come back behind here in a few days and I'll put some tape there and I'll just take a brush and brush in that little bit. But as you can see, it came out really nice. Caulked onto the brick there. My line's not as straight as it could be, but this, the seam is covered. I had to caulk this. This is all redone and this one's redone. Up here in this corners and there. All the way down there to the bottom and over here let's see it wraps around and it looks like it just dead ends into nowhere and the weather stripping hides it all all right so let's go over a few of the things that i had done different on this project and a few of the things i really liked first of all i had bought an actual card scraper and tried that and see if it worked instead of trying to make my putty knife into one next i had done a better job of setting the depth on this plane now, when I finally got this dialed in to where it took about half the thickness of the paint and I'd have to go over it a couple, three times to get it all, it worked smooth as butter. It really, really well. Next thing would have been, I'd done a better job of reading instructions on the Bondo and kneaded or mixed up the hardener in the little tube. Because I didn't, when I went to mix up the Bondo, it set up a lot faster than it's supposed to and so it gave me a lot shorter working time and in turn, I used a lot more Bondo than I needed to to get this part done. And the last thing I'd have done, I'd put a heavier primer coat on. 
and let it dry overnight and it came back with some 180 or 220 and sanded it. And the reason is, is I'd use that to get the little bitty fine mistakes that if I look real close, I can see, but the normal person coming up to the door to look at the door isn't gonna know that unless they get real close. But me, being OCD, I'd like to gotten those spots a little bit better. Now, let's talk about the things that I liked about this project. First of all, how well that plane worked at taking this paint off. Like I said, once I got it dialed in, it worked great. Next, just how razor sharp I could get this putty knife and how well it worked also to get the paint off where I needed it to. The Bondo did a very good job of hiding my mistakes or fixing my mistakes and others that were there before me. I liked how well the caulking laid down in these grooves and I liked how well the double tape method worked around here. I liked my new uh, extension poles that I used to hold the plastic up so I didn't get overspray in the house. Those worked really well. Those were a nice little uh, purchase. And then last but not least, it's my HVLP sprayer. I love spraying with it. It laid down the paint really nice. I just don't like roller or brush marks. So wherever I can, I like to spray and it did a very good job. If you want to learn how to do some DIY projects and learn from my mistakes and see how I fix them, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification so when the next video comes out you can watch me screw some stuff up and how I fix it. And if you want to support the channel, go to my Etsy link down below and purchase some DIY merchandise or click on one of the tool links and buy some tools for yourself. And with that, another project down. So until the next one, happy DIYing.